Hello and welcome to day three of the Summer and Fall Online Retreat. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to open our hearts and minds as we pray this prayer from St. Augustine, our patron and intercessor, as we are making this Summer and Fall Retreat. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work, too, may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit. Defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, my apologies for yesterday, and hopefully my voice will be doing better. I continue to feel better, so hopefully today... As we begin Dom Chattard's beautiful work, The Soul of the Apostolate, that my voice isn't going to go and I'm not going to have fits of coughing, but all God's will, right? So let's trust. So we begin with the prologue. O oh God, infinitely good and great, wonderful indeed are the truths that faith lays open to us concerning the life which thou leadest within thyself, and these truths dazzle us. Father all holy, thou dost contemplate thyself forever in the word, thy perfect image. Thy word exults in rapt joy at thy beauty. And Father and Son, from your joint ecstasy, leaps forth the strong flame of love, the Holy Spirit. You alone, O adorable Trinity, are the interior life, perfect, superabundant, and infinite. Goodness unlimited, you desire to spread this your own inner life, everywhere, outside yourself. You speak, and your works spring forth out of nothingness, to declare your perfections and to sing your glory. Between you and the dust quickened by your breath, there is a deep abyss, and this your Holy Spirit wishes to bridge. Thus, he will find a way of satisfying his immense need to love, to give himself. And therefore he calls forth from your bosom the decree that we become divine. Wonder of wonders, this clay fashioned by your hands will have the power to be deified and share in your eternal happiness. Your word offers himself for the fulfillment of this work. And he is made flesh, that we may become gods. And yet, O Lord, Thou hast not left the bosom of thy Father. It is there that thy essential life subsists, and it is from this source that the marvels of thy apostolate are to flow. O Jesus Emmanuel, thou dost hand over to thy apostles thy gospel, thy cross, thy Eucharist, and giveth them the mission to go forth and beget for thy Father sons of adoption. And then thou dost return, ascending, to thy Father. Thine henceforth, O Holy Spirit, is the care of sanctifying and directing the mystical body of the God-man. Thou deigneth to take unto thyself fellow workers in thy function of bringing from the head divine life into the members. Burning with Pentecostal fires, they will go forth to sow broadcast in the minds of all the word that enlightens, and in all hearts the grace that enkindles. Thus will they impart to men that divine life of which thou art the fullness. O divine fire, stir up in all those who have part in thy apostolate the flames that transform those fortunate retreatments in the upper room. Then they will be no longer mere preachers of dogma or moral theology, but men living to transfuse the blood of God into the souls of men. Spirit of light, imprint upon their minds, in characters that can never be erased, this truth, that their apostolate will be successful only in the measure that they themselves live that supernatural inner life of which thou art the sovereign principle, and Jesus Christ the source. O infinite charity, make their wills burn with thirst for the interior life. Penetrate and flood their hearts with thy sweetness and strength, and show them that even here on this earth there is no real happiness, 
except in this life of imitation and sharing in thine own life, and in that of the heart of Jesus, in the bosom of the Father of all mercy and all kindness. O Mary Immaculate, Queen of Apostles, deign to bless these simple pages. Grant that all who read them may really understand that, if it please God to use their activity as an ordinary instrument of his providence, in pouring out his heavenly riches upon the souls of men, this activity, if it is to produce any results, will have to participate somehow in the nature of the divine act, as thou didst behold it in the bosom of God, when he, to whom we owe the power of calling thee our mother, became incarnate in the virginal womb. And thus ends the prologue. Very, very... Heidi. <laughs> There's got to be a better word, uh, but it's very high language. But you can see the desire of Dom Chatard to really call forth our minds and hearts and to inflame them with the desire to truly serve the Lord, not just through our works, but I repeat this. That the Holy Spirit imprint upon their minds this truth. That their apostolate will be successful only in the measure that they themselves live that supernatural inner life. Think about that. Anything that we do, any apostolate, any works, any living out of our faith is only going to be successful in the measure that it corresponds with the supernatural inner life. Of which, of course, God is the sovereign principle and Jesus is the source. This is your resolution for today. Do you truly believe that it is fundamentally necessary, this truth? Do you truly believe that all of what you do, all of what you say, is only going to be successful in the measure that you are committed to the supernatural inner life. In other words, that it's only going to be successful in accord with how much that you are in relationship with God. This is your prayer. This is what prayer is. Prayer is simply an intimate relationship. It's an intimate conversation with God. This is what our prayer is. And our prayer depends upon our belief that what it is that we are called to do, but especially of who it is that we're called to be, is dependent upon our prayer, upon our interior life, upon how much we are depending upon God and Jesus Christ. So our resolution for today is to examine, do you believe this? Do you believe this reality? And if you think you believe this, examine your life and see whether or not your actions reflect that belief. In other words, is prayer first and foremost in your day? Is it first and foremost in the midst of everything that you do? Is it first and foremost? And I'm not talking just saying prayers. I'm talking about being in intimate communion with God throughout the day. Is this what is first and foremost? And this is what is directing everything in your life. This is what we have to examine our life and look at. It's challenging and it is very humbling. Because even when we think that this might be the case. We see that our actions, our daily life, doesn't necessarily reflect this truth. So today, we see where we are, which is a good thing. It is a good thing to know where it is that we are, so then we can call upon the graces of God to help us then continue on. So know my continued prayers for each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me. And we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.